Okay, I've been doing a lot of experimentation um, with different surfaces and media and uh, all kinds of different things of late, but I thought I'd go back to some compositional basics in terms of um, establishing your basic layout for your scenes. Okay, it's good to go back to the basics every now and then and to talk about those types of um, processes. But I'm going to be using number, set number six, nine, and ten here. We have some components from set number seven. But anyways, what I'm doing here is kind of talking more about the process in terms of the fundamentals, which don't have to be image specific, okay? So if you kind of think about it in terms of that, then you can substitute whatever you want um, if you're stamping along with me, okay? So I'll use some other images as well, but think about the concept more than the specific arrangements. Okay, now that being said, oftentimes when I'm stamping my layouts, okay, I'm often leaving, if you've watched my other videos, I often leave things like foreground elements, things like these reeds and uh, overhanging branches in my scenes, things like that. I often leave those for the end kind of step, you know, stamping something right in the foreground in dark colors, and I've often been using versifying black. But here, just to make this easier for the, you know, those new to scenic stamping or stampscapes or both, um, we're going to stamp everything out so that they can kind of visualize what the end composition will look like in its entirety as far as the images go, okay? And you can certainly do that that way. I often just leave that for the, uh, the last step um, just because I can get a nice deep impression, a very crisp one, and that's the last thing that's stamped because I often bring a lot of colors over the top of it. And if I'm stamping on a video like this, um, I don't want to wait for things to dry, inks to dry and whatnot, if I'm applying a lot of colors over the top of it. So I often just, I know, I kind of leave things a little bit more open as far as the direction where, that I want to take, you know, things like foreground imagery, how much of the foreground imagery to use and whatnot. But let's just do this one from... Uh, kind of a complete scene and compositional um, kind of thought process. Okay, so what I'm doing right here now is when I used to teach workshops, I would tell people, okay, in terms of, I wasn't working them through specifics either. I would just start them off in terms of the general concept. So I would have them pick out some kind of main subject matter, okay? Um, in this case, it would be the Country Chapel from um, set number 10, okay? And this is going to be the main subject matter of the scene, okay? It's not going to be like a piece of, you know, a grass over here on the side or something like that, or some foreground reeds, does that make sense? So we're going to stamp this first. Okay, now I also happen to have this um, road leading into the scene too. And I could have stamped this, you know, the chapel first and then they had this road leading into it, but just going back to the basics again, I just think it's easier kind of to place our chapel on top of this, you know, rather than doing this larger stamp and trying to match that part up with this. I can see exactly where that's going to go. But it could be either way though, okay? So let's get that stamped right in there. Okay, now here's the thing. Here, you know, when people are get, first getting into it, they're not used to doing a lot of overlapping and whatnot, okay? So I'm going to overlap this right down into this um, little grassy slope, okay? Now if you want to, you can mask off a little bit. Don't mask, don't over mask though, because you want kind of the bottom part portion of this to be merging in with the top portion of the previous stamp a little bit and that's where you get that seamless aspect. If you get spaces in between like white spaces if you're going to be coloring in these scenes then you don't need to worry about that too much because it will be filled in with color okay but if you can get it kind of a little bit more seamless to begin with 
then you just have a little bit less work to do in that coloring process, okay? All right, so see that right there? Now see, this is nestled right in there, so it did go down into there, okay, a little bit. But it merges right in there, and then you get that seamless aspect, okay? Overlapping is good. Overlapping too much is not so good, but there's a big tolerance level before you get too much, okay? I don't want to stamp this an inch down into that, you know, previous one, but eighth inch to a quarter inch or so, that's, you know, between here and there, or I don't know, that maybe might even be a half inch, so it's a little bit like that and that, okay? It's quite a bit, okay? We want these stamps to be really, really forgiving, universal, etc., etc., in terms of the usage, okay? Now, I'm just stamping this out in black now. We'll get into some different coloring aspects uh, later on in this video, but let's just talk about the building portion, okay? Now, I'm taking the, the tree cluster from this set, and we have these areas out to the side. We don't have to have trees out there if we don't want to, but if we do, I can just take this and take it right on in there. Let's do this a couple different ways. I'll stamp this right there, okay? So this is right here, a little bit more in the foreground, the lower you stamp something. See, this road represents near, and that background part of the road represents, you know, farther back, right? So anything that you stamp lower is going to represent something a little bit closer to us. But let's do something like this now, okay? I mean, we could just take this tree stamp right here again and just stamp it right over here, but let's mask this off and just use a smaller portion of it like this. Okay, so you have that those trees a little bit farther back, right? It's the same tree as right here, but they look different, don't they? And they also merge in with this tree right here. Okay, I'm not overlapping into the chapel, but I did overlap into the trees. All right. Now, there's all kinds of other things we can do. I could build these up higher, like this is at the foot of a, you know, a, a hill or something like that, and I can have some other background trees in there. I can mask this off or I can ink it up and blot that, some of that off. Now let me just show you what I mean by that, okay? Alright, so to go for some variation. Now I don't want to take this whole tree like that and stamp it right on in here, okay? So what I might do is I can either mask this portion off right here. You don't have to mask off those dark trees up there too much, but I can also just take this and wipe this off right here, okay? So what we have is it wet and it transitions into a little bit drier to dry down here. So a lot of ink's taken off down here and about half the ink right here, quarter ink, and that's full ink up there. So it's wet to dry, okay? It's not just wet, dry, it's wet, drier, drier, driest, okay? And this is what it looks like. That's what I took off right there, okay? And then when you put this back up in here, what you're doing is you're creating a little bit of space in between that background tree and that foreground tree, so it transitions off. So the silhouette of this foreground one still remains. Let's try that again. I could probably even take off even more ink than I did. Okay, so I can go like this. Now, I could do this in greens and things like that, too, so we would get a lot more variation, or in fall colors, you know, it would be perfect for this time of year. Let's see how that transitions right back there. So it looks like it's farther back in the distance, too, because you put that little area of kind of illuminated uh, mist or something like that. Or it could just be, I don't know, haze or something like that, atmospheric haze. Let's do something again. Let's, do, let's try this here. Let's go for the second impression of it and see if it looks even farther back in the distance because it stamps out even lighter. Okay, maybe. Doesn't that look like it's farther back than this one? And what do we do? We just took off some ink. So it's not like this big process or, you know, that's hard to do. It's easy to do if you just kind of remove that ink off of there. Okay, now, like I said, um, a lot of times I reserve my um, foreground imagery to be stamped later on, but let's just put it in right now. Um, here, I'll just use this one I have. This is the reeds right here. Wood mounted, cling foam mounted version right here. Uh, let's see, my block here. 
This block's a little bit too small. No. There we go. One side's beveled and one's not. Okay, foreground imagery. This grass right here represents grass that's a little bit taller and closer to us, right? If you look at my designs in the tiny little details, you can see that grass texturing right in here, right? Okay, see that right down there? But if you put this in here like so, okay, just light even pressure with your foreground elements like this, things that are delicate like this, don't stamp it out like this, like smashing it down. Well, actually that didn't look too bad. <laughs> but some, sometimes people squeeze it down like that, you know, where it looks like, you know, these smash tips or something like that. Just light, even pressure, okay? But look at this right here. Doesn't that really push the depth of the scene like that? Yeah, let's put maybe some over here on the side of the uh, road. Okay, something of that sort. All right, now we have all that space up top here, don't we? Now, this is the thing that I used to have people do in my workshops. I would say, if you kind of have a color scheme in mind, let's say I'm just going to do a sun, okay? Um, or in this case, a moon. Maybe, maybe because I stamped all these in black, maybe it'll be a kind of a darker scene. So let's take instead of the sun from that same set and let's grab the moon from nature's sheet number nine. These are sold individually too. It could be any moon that you want. This one just happens to come with that set. What I would have people do is, okay, after they you know, conceived of what they wanted their subject matter to be, now if they have nature set number 10, you know, chances are it'd be the country chapel because that's the one that comes with it. But let's say they wanted to do this in a nighttime type of scene, okay? Well, the nighttime types of scenes typically aren't your yellows, reds, oranges, like a sunset or something like that. You wouldn't see green grass down here usually. You can alter that for your own world, though. But just in general, it's usually a cooler color scheme, right? So as I'm saying, thinking blues or something like that. You know, sometimes you get, you know, into a different type of moon that's on the horizon. It looks really cool. It's kind of a more of a warm tinge, you know, harvest moon or whatever people think of that. But let's just go with a cool color scheme. And what I would have them do is I would have them stamp out their um, sky figures be it a sun or whatever, in the color scheme that's going to be their overall um, kind of temperature, okay? Doesn't mean it can't be gray or something like that, something neutral, I'm just saying in general, okay? But anyways, what we would do is I would have them stamp that out in the color from their color scheme. If you're stamping a sunset, stamp out your sun maybe in an orange or a red or something like that, or brown, some warm tone. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't be in black, though, okay? But just in general, if you're going for something a little bit more kind of light-oriented, okay, that means that the light that's being cast in your scene, in theory, the light source in that scene would be the same color out of your color scheme. So if it was a sunset over the chapel using the sun right here, you know, instead of stamping it in black, stamp it in a color out of the color scheme, okay? So now I would run in my blue tones in here and I'd have some illuminated light down here and blues and whatnot. You don't see a lot of different bright colors unless there's, you know, like an incandescent light bulb or something like that in the scene. Uh, casting, you know, certain types of light, but just in general. Nighttime scenes, you know, that type of reflected moonlight you know, off of colored objects, it doesn't look like that. Reds look like they're black and, you know, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's our foundation right there. Oh, um, let's put some foreground, you know, like I often do in my sky area, okay? So, well, let's just grab some of this right here. I'm just grabbing the leaves stamp like so okay so just in recap you know what I've done so far is a main subject matter filler stamps okay foreground and background okay 
So you stamp in your main subject matter and then you work your filler around it. This one just happened to have this road in here too, so that was also included in the, uh, kind of in that, you know, initial um, consideration as far as what you're stamping. Okay, these are just some overhanging uh, leaves that look great to kind of frame off a scene. And you might imagine um, why I might stamp this last in most cases, because I don't know how dark my scene is going to be a lot of times. So what I often do is I kind of reserve these types of foreground elements, okay, to be stamped in the end, because if it gets really dark out here, and I really like it, and I keep going darker and darker and darker, we won't be able to see those leaves quite as much, so, you know, I might stamp them accordingly. In this case, I don't know if we just have leaves up there, but let's say if this got really dark blue up here around my moon, sometimes it's fun to stamp, like, your leaves in, or your branches or foreground, and say something like a white pigment ink to stand out against that darker background, and that's kind of fun. This could be an ice storm, you know, where there's still leaves up there, okay? All right, so that is our first composition. Let's get into some other ones, and let's move a little bit faster, okay? I won't get into, you know, I'll describe what I'm doing and the concept of everything like that, but let's get moving along here. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, this lakeside cabin right here, okay? This is from nature set number six. And like I said, everything's sold individually as well too. But it could be anything, any type of structure. So if you have a structure on you, go ahead and use it. Okay, now I am stamping, everything that I'll stamp out right here today will be on a quarter size piece of paper for and a quarter by five and a half inches, okay? Four by sixes, whatever. It doesn't have to be that. You can do it on a half page scene or a full page scene if you want to. If you do that, you're just going to have a little bit more filler imageries uh, or a lot more filler imagery to fill in on the sides. All right, now your approach to compositions in terms of your placement of your main imagery, okay? Just depends on what you want. If you want more sky, I'll stamp it lower, right? Then we have a lot of things to do in the sky. You want more water? Then stamp it up high. Stamping up high is often fun. A lot of times people want to kind of position their main images real central, which is what you would often do if you were doing something like subject matter um, outline stamps. Okay, let's say you got birthday cake or something like that, and you're stamping the birthday cake right in the middle. Then you're placing your happy birthday up here, you know, so right, you know, some kind of writing down below or something like that. But in scenic stamping, what we're talking about a lot of times is just, I don't know, the, it's, it's much more wide open, so you can stamp this high. If you want water, you can stamp it low and get more air. You can stamp it kind of, I usually go off kind of more of a rule of thirds type of thing. I don't measure everything out, you know, but I often do things a little bit more off center, okay? So let's stay with this. Uh, portrait format here in terms of top and bottom we can go for something like that and I have a lot of water right so this is kind of roughly a third see that one two three rule of thirds okay um, let's do something I tell you what we just stamped that moon out before now this is where I don't know some people if they're really anal it bothers them with me I am not, and I don't care about certain things like this. I'll, sh I'll tell you what I'm getting to. Or I'll show you what I'm getting at, okay? So let's go with the same moon again. Love moons and reflections off waters and things like that. And one of the things I do is I kind of wipe off my perimeter right here. Stamping it out in blue tones again, all right? And then let's put this... Oh, I'll just put this around around here or so. Okay, so we have that moon up there. And I can stamp this moon down here. I'll, it's not going to be a mirrored Im image because I'm not using a mirror stamp. 
Um, you certainly can if you're adept at using those and really enjoy using them, but for me, I usually don't take the time to do something like that, so... Okay, now I don't put, stamp the moon over here, okay, because it's more of this um, vertical, kind of reflective positioning of that. I don't know if I got that right. It might be a little bit off-center. <laughs> okay, mine's a little bit off-center, but who cares? Okay, so there's my um, uh, reflection down here. Those would be my light sources. I would darken in the areas around it, okay? Like out here and here. Leave that kind of rooftop a little bit light. It's fun to color kind of uh, this windows with a yellow gel pen to look like this warm light coming out of your cabin. All right. We have this other area to fill in down here. You, this could all just be water, okay? And you would put a canoeist or a bird, you know, swimming down there in the water if we want to. Let's expand on it a little bit, though. This is the ledge from nature set number six. I can stamp it like this. Let me stamp it at an angle, though. Let's do this a little bit um, skewed, just for some variation. My <laughs> first inclination would be to stamp it just completely uh, horizontal, nice and flat, which wouldn't be wrong, but let's just do it this way. Okay, see that little part that doesn't match uh, or doesn't go to the end? You just take that little portion like this, and you can just stamp it right over here. What am I doing? I'm overlapping in this first impression a bit with this one, okay, and it matches right up, and you get that seamless aspect of it. Now one of the things I did um, in a fairly recent video, and I think it was going from, talking about going from something very um, kind of beginner oriented to advanced, and you know, the, the advanced portion is just minimal. I say advanced with, you know, in quotes because it's not really advanced. It's just a little tweak. Okay. Now, see this right here where there's these reeds down here, okay? I mean, I could stamp that again right here in the foreground, okay? But let me just do a little tweak on that idea. Okay. And let's just get the whole foundation going. I'm going to be stamping my foreground elements in here. Okay, so this is the reed stamp. Let's get some of these reeds in the foreground. Okay. Now, what I could do is I could mask off that rock and put some of these reeds behind there. But, since I am using uh, sets number uh, 9, and as well as 6, uh, these smaller ones come in the 9, so let's use some of these. This is just a little tweak. Like I said, you can use those other reeds right back up in here, the larger ones, okay? But if you have the smaller ones, why not utilize it and make use of scale? To push distance a little bit, so you can have a little bit more... Um, depth within this foreground area, okay? So see this? Where I'm just kind of masking off that rock. Think about like so. And I'm not even using color. I could stamp this in green or something like that, or dark blue if this is going to be a blue color scheme. And it would look even farther back, but see this right in here? So you have this uh, rock in here that's sandwiched you know, with these um, these grasses in here, and it makes that foreground look, I don't know, to me it looks fairly deep and rich in terms of the imagery that had been used in there, okay? So this is a really good foundation for your composition and your, what will end up being your end result. Okay, this is the little solo canoeist. Now these are things like that I often don't do, okay? I hardly ever stamp my foregrounds um, at this point in time, you know, 
within the composition. I usually save that for the last, but especially like little figures too. I mean, I could work my color scheme around this figure too, but oftentimes I just kind of wait to see how, you know, where the color scheme, lighting scheme goes with all my coloring process, but um, we could certainly stamp that out to begin with too. So see that right in front of the moon is I mean, kind of make that reflection a little bit more dramatic and again this will be kind of illuminated it'll look like um, like a spotlight shining down on this little figure in this little kind of stage you know it's, when you're doing these things you're kind of staging um, your objects within a scene and whatever kind of coloring process you go through um, is up to you in terms of medium and as well as your techniques that you're using with that medium. So this could be done in, uh, I'm doing this on glossy cardstock here, but you can do this on a matte cardstock and then maybe you would be using things like um, chalks and pastels and uh, watercolor paints, whatever, okay? But you could still establish this the same way. Okay, this is the, um, Sedge filler stamp. I mean, uh, not sedge filler. This is the water pattern stamp from. It comes in both. Uh, it comes in a couple different sets. This one's off of the uh, the uh, nature set number six. With the same one with the uh, lakeside cabin. Okay. Now this is. I don't have to put this in there, you know. But I'm thinking maybe for a little bit of an extra texture. Okay. I'm kind of blotting this off a little bit because I just want some real subtle forms in here. Okay, now here's the thing, okay? If a blue light is being cast in here by that moon, okay? My moon is going to be blue, it's going to be casting kind of a cool blue light. Then the shadows that are being created on this blue type of surface, they would just be darker versions of that color, okay? It doesn't mean you can't stamp this out in black, okay? It would have a different look to it. It would be a little bit more dramatic. Maybe you're gonna do a, you know, a Halloween scene with uh, a lot of drama and uh, stark contrasts. But if you're talking about lighting, approaching color from a lighting perspective, then the colors in the shadows are usually brighter versions than the um, the lit portions, okay? So, if this was a sunset scene, I'd be using the water pattern in probably oranges, reds, browns, whatever, you know, something like that, violets. In this case, it's just blues and darker blues, and I use the same blue, but some of it was just stamped out a couple times before, okay? So we get a little bit of variation in there, okay? So, just in recap again, you start off with your main image, okay? And then we're filling in the area around it. I don't really consider sky imagery to be a filler stamp, you know, like, like clumps of grass or something like that, or a filler stamp like this in terms of the water um, pattern. But you are kind of composing around our main image, okay? So I have the moon up here, the reflection down here, and, the, and you know, then I add in the foreground. In this case, the foreground also included you know, a fairly significant design in terms of uh, the theme of it. Things like these reeds often just kind of blend in with the background, but when you start adding in foregrounds like rocks and things of that sort, you know, they kind of play kind of a little bit more of a significant role. All right, so um, that is that. Lots of fun. I really enjoy doing these... Um, Compositions like that, uh, it's, it kind of eats away at me sometimes because I really feel, I get the itch to, to go in and uh, to finish them. And uh, I don't know, these sitting around on my desk, I doubt if I'll be able to just leave them there without finishing them off at some point in time. Sometimes it's sooner than later because I sit down to do something else and if those are sitting there, I just... I just change all plans because I want to use them. Okay, let's, you know, we've been talking about sunset colors. Let's do that. Okay, let's use um, the nature set number nine. Uh, 
Lakeside Cove. You can do this now. You can do just re-stamp your compositions from your previous ones, but we're just going to do this in a kind of more of a sunset type of fashion. Okay, let's go just for the sake of variation. Let's go to the landscape. You know, instead of portrait, I'll go landscape on this one. Okay, and uh, let's go a little bit more sky in this one. So I'll stamp this a little, a little bit lower. And I, and I put it in the center like that. Um, let's, and now I could just take that same image and stamp it again over here. And ink up again and stamp it again over here and you'd have this whole line. But let's go for a little bit more depth in the composition aspect of it and let's use the pines and rocks stamp let me get this positioned on here all right these are cling foam stamps so i don't need my tech and peel um, surface in there okay and things that are closer to us or a little bit farther down okay so I'll stand this a little bit lower like so okay overlapped it so maybe this lakeside cove is kind of wrapping around and it's getting much closer to us where you'd see that change in scale of the trees and rocks Okay, same thing on this on the, this other side. Probably overlapping about a, eh, I don't know, somewhere in between an eighth and a quarter inch or so. Yeah, maybe less so. I thought I went into that one more. That one just merges. This one overlaps a little bit more. But you see that where that you get that nice variation right there. Okay. That's my cleaning right there, by the way. If, if I'm not using something like the Versafine or something like that, and if I think I'm just going to stamp those same images out in dark colors again in the future, then I just I don't bother with uh, cleaning them off. You know, beyond that, water-based images. I mean, certainly if you're working with like a you know, a Stazon or something like that, a solvent ink, then by all means, you know, clean them off. And I will have to clean those off eventually. It start even with dye based things, they start to get a little bit of a buildup. And then if you touch it, it feels kind of dry to the touch. You know, it's not really the rubber's not dried out from the the media, it's just there there's so much crusted ink on there, and it does get that way after a while. A long while though. Okay, so this puts us on this shore. I don't know, it's not a very wide lake, I'm sure, but it just works from a compositional aspect to have something like that in the foreground. You don't always have to have foreground if you don't want to. I just find it to be a nice framing device for our composition to have things like that. Let's get to a sunset kind of foundational color scheme, okay? So when I do sunsets, if I just go with oranges and reds, sometimes I find those to be just a little bit too bright for me. You know, it's not earthy and kind of rich. It just seems like vibrate color. So um, I often use either brown. You know, you can use your Distress Ink browns. There's so many different ones. Um, but just for this scene right here, I'm going to stamp out my sun in this brown, okay? Just so you can see it better. If I stamped it out in the light, light orange, you know, it might not show up as much on this video. Okay. So I've inked up my sky figure, and it's a good habit to kind of get in the habit of doing a little bit of a perimeter, kind of mopping off of this, uh, you know, any type of sky figure. All right, where are we going to place this? Other than this situation right here, I wouldn't find that sun to be centered right here to be too, you know, too bad to do it that way. But... Uh, Oh, you can put it wherever you want. I can put it up here in the corner. Put it over here. I usually don't like it on the right side. It's usually I'm reading from left to right, I guess. So, but let's—I don't know. Let's let's uh, put this kind of 
towards the middle of the page. I'm stamping it over these trees, okay? Like about like so. Okay, something like that. You no, know, I'd bring in some yellows and whatnot. I could put, you know, a reflective type of uh, situation down there in the water. I don't think I'm going to, though. Just because I, you know, I just did that moon one. I like to go for a little bit of variation between <laughs> scene to scene, but it, you know, it wouldn't be a bad way to go. All right, now let's let's use our cloud cumulus right here. This is a really fantastic kind of filler image. This is one of those um, designs that could be. It's a perfect kind of filler secondary player. It could be something that's even invisible in the background or in the foreground. I use it for fog and often to, but it can also be the star of the scene depending on the context that you use it in. Okay, I could do a scene really low down here and just have a sky filled with these billowing clouds and uh, it would fill that starring role just fine. Okay. And that's, isn't that the ideal type of stamp, is where you, it can be, it can have a lot of different personalities. It's like having a really versatile actor, okay, that you can plug them into anything and they'll just, you know, get lost in that role that they're serving, okay. All right, so I'm just stamping this out in the same brown, all right. The clouds are being lit in a certain direction on this stamp, okay. So if I have this like this, it's being, they're being top lit. Let's say I have a light source down here. I would just turn this around and they'd be bottom lit, right? So here's this sun right here. If I stamp a cloud right here, I'll have the clouds pointing towards that light like that, okay? Overlapping a quarter inch to a half inch or so into that cloudless sun, okay? off the perimeter and wiping off a good half inch into it and giving the good quarter inch perimeter a pretty good wipe okay now I'm trying to be careful not to stamp all the way into that center of that Sun though okay but you can see where I got pretty close to it there's still a quarter inch or so Let's see how that one's going like that bottom lit right now my last impression will be like that okay so the clouds are being illuminated accordingly. Yeah, I'm going to take off a little bit of that ink in the center there too, just so it's a light, a little bit of a lighter version of the cloud. <laughs> I didn't really clean this off real well just a minute ago. So there's a little bit of black in that uh, cloud right there. So that cloud's a little bit darker. Okay, so see this? It's going right in here. The edge of this cloud of sun is right there, so I'm going to come into it. I'm not trying to match up edge to edge, okay? That's everyone's first inclination oftentimes when they're doing this style of stamping is to just get edge to edge. They're thinking it's more like a puzzle where things match up perfectly. Well, they match up perfectly, but you just have to overlap them, okay? So I say they match up. I, I mean they merge, okay? but they've been designed, everything's been designed to be overlapped for user ease, okay? All right, can you kind of get the feel of this already? You know, you can see this kind of light streaming down here and reflecting off of it. Can you kind of imagine it in your head? <laughs> yeah, at this point in time, we can kind of see it coming together a little bit. Now, let me just use some of this. Now, well, that stamped out darker because I didn't re-ink this, but that's no matter. I'd be bringing in a lot of different colors into here anyway. So let's moth this off pretty good and then hit the perimeter quite a bit. All right, come up like this. See, this is all being top lit now, right? Because that sun is right up there. It's more of, it's supposed to represent a reflection too. Let me try to go for another impression right there. All right, can we kind of see the, um, the beginnings now of this uh, light source and illuminated light down here because it's lighter right in here. You bring in your yellows, your warm tones, oranges and whatnot, pinks and whatnot, and that'll really make that stand out nice and light. 
okay, by bringing in some darker colors around it and doing the same down here. And then you have a nice foundation, okay? Now you can also do things like uh, your birds or whatever in here. Sometimes um, when you stamp something that's fairly dark next to the light source, the end result will um, give the appearance of that light source being even lighter by the very fact that you have something dark right next to it, and that's contrast, okay? These trees right here will make that seem lighter by contrast by having it there. And again, so we'd be just running in our tones in there. So, that being said, there's some birds right here. And you can have them kind of, you know, right in here, something like that. So won't that provide a nice composition for um, the color scheme to come, the lighting scheme to come. All right, so let's do one more, okay? Try to get through this a little bit faster. I keep saying that, but anyways, I don't know. I can't stop teaching, I guess. All right, let's take the pine off of nature sheet number six, and let's just do a composition with that, okay? Now on this one, let's say, you know, that last one, the, the kind of the main scene was the lakeside cove. Let's just go with something like, I don't know, a few trees, okay? Let's just color this up uh, with black. Let's do something right here, too. Let's bring a little bit of green into it. All right, here's a couple pens. So this is black, and I'll go into it with a few greens like this so they don't stamp out too light, okay? It's mixing in with a lot of the black, and where I go over a little bit more with the pen, that should read as more pure green, okay? So something like this. Okay. Is that green in there? That variation? All right, let's do the same thing. Oh, a few times. When we stamp out our next impression, let's change the height of it a little bit. Okay. Tempted to try um, a second impression of it where it's lighter, so it looks like it's farther back, like we did on the uh, um, those background trees. That those ones are just stamped in black. So this is the type of coloring that you can do too on this type of imagery. You know, color those trees like we're doing here. Don't, don't do them too light, though, because if you're going to be running in some color into that, you want them to stand out, um, you know, from the background still, so, you know, kind of, you know, semi-dark, you know, darker tones. Okay, so this gives it, you know, your, which would make sense, I mean, we're using watercolor pens, they call them dye-based pens, but, you know, they're the same types of, uh, Pens, you know, back when as kids, uh, you've been around a while, uh, they used to call them watercolor um, markers. And those, those are basically just dye based inks. Okay. Okay, so going on like so. Okay. <laughs> kind of rule of. Uh, What is it? It's not thirds, it's like odds. Sometimes you, if you do like a kind of an odd number, um, from a compositional standpoint, it looks a little better. Now that one I just stamped into straight black, so we get some variation right in here, right? Okay. There's a 
handful of you out there cringing right now at that cleaning job. They're like, ah, you, I gotta have all my stamps, you know, come perfectly clean. And I respect that, though. <laughs> I do clean my stamps once in a while, but I don't know. Not for, oh, okay, and I do need to clean this. I was going to use blue for that, but I just remembered that I just stamped that cloud out in all brown, so I just take some water like this or a paper towel and you can kind of clean it up like this. I, I have my, you know, that stamp cleaner type of thing like this, like that with a scrubbing pad. You know, it might be time to use some of that on some of my stamps, but for right now, in the name of this video, let's not do any type of a really super careful cleaning and complete cleaning. All right, this is just a light blue. Okay, let me make sure I'm not getting all brown or something like that. Okay, so this one, again, this is kind of, you know, since I'm not stamping out some of the... I mean, I could, I could stamp that cabin out there in the background. It would be this higher vantage point kind of looking back at it, or this chapel. Wouldn't this be kind of a nice stamp to put, like, right back in here? It looks like you're looking down into this little opening in the meadow that the uh, our little chapel is. It would be kind of charming. Um, but anyways, wiping off the surrounding area right here. Maybe I won't color this in too in depth, but we can go for you know a pretty nice composition like this. Clouds around here. Now this is a lighter blue than those trees. Okay, so I can just stamp it right on over those trees, and it's not as if this blue cloud and light cloud, a very light blue light cloud will look like it's in front of those trees. The darkest thing is always going to look like it's, you know, in the front of our compositions. Okay. But look at that beautiful transition from something to just... Um, blend it in to the white piece of paper, okay? Look how soft it looks, just from that little mop off on the perimeter, okay? It doesn't look like a bunch of rectangles, which the stamp is, right? Oh, fundamentals on this cloud stamp right here. This is what I do, okay? It's, it's a two by three inch stamp. I'm wiping off a good half inch into it or so, okay? But when I stamp this out, usually I stamp it. I usually I'm usually center pressured like this with my finger in here. I mean I give you know I give it a pretty good impression pressure, not extreme or anything like that. But okay, now see where this transitions in here. I don't need to wipe it off for you know these perimeter impressions because it just blends in right with the previous impression. We can do something like that. And like so, center pressuring like this, okay? And you get a good impression quality like that. I have the perfect stamp for this. Let me put this on pause. Okay, this quote right here says, color it green with trees, okay? Uh, all right, I just found my stamp. What happened to my... Uh, my black pad. Oh, put that up there. I don't know. Okay, so this is off the scenic sentiments sheet. But let's do something right here. See that where it says color it green. This is looking at it backwards, but this is green right here. I'm going to kind of transition that one a little bit. Let's go with the right on the top so it's black, but I'm coloring the top portion of it green. Okay. That. And see with that little area that I left in here? That was light. It'd be a perfect opportunity for some sunlight kind of pouring through or whatever, or putting some light rays in there. That'd be cool too. But why not that? Color it green with trees. And then, do you see that transition up there? 
see what I did. That's just black, black, but I related. Um, I don't know, the focal theme, I guess, is these variations of green within here. So, you, you know, you, you can do something like that. You can kind of relate, create a, create a, a visual um, connection with your text. So it kind of keeps it within, I don't know, the theme of the piece, which is kind of fun to do. You can put some birds up here, and put them down here, put them down here. Yeah, how about like this, something like this. It's like they're kind of flying off like that. Now, all these are just kind of foundations. I mean, this doesn't look too bad as is. You can put a nice little frame around it, but I think it'd be good with a little bit of a toning around here. So it really looks like that light is kind of, you know, illuminating the piece. And I think some, I like using white pigment ink around in here to make this area in here kind of glow and look even more um, illuminated with um, soft light within that space. So I think this one's really going to be, and this is really simple right here too as far as the composition goes, but I think that looks really good. A little bit of tone around here though will bring that focal point into here and it'll look like this is emanating light more. Right out here it's very light, it's almost as light as right in here even though we have the textures, so if we just tone this up a little bit kind of in a vignette fashion, that'll really pop out. So anyways, okay, so this one right here, um, stamped our main imagery, which are those trees, okay? And then we added our filler stamp. It looks, it's kind of around it. It looks like it's in back of it, but it does just really fill in like that, okay? Now, think about this though. If I stamp all those clouds out in black, it would have a really different kind of emotional quality to it, right? That would look fantastic if, let's say, instead of those birds right there, or you could use those birds in black like that, but if I stamp those in black back there, it would look kind of like gray, a grayscale um, background color scheme. We can tone that in with a little bit more gray and black or whatever, but that would be a fantastic like Halloween card or something like that, or if you had some bats to put in there, or if you had a little skull as, you know, the center point, or, or just Happy Halloween or something like that. You know, it would have this kind of more eerie feel because of the contrast of those forms in there. Right now they're all kind of nice and billowy and soft, but yeah, if they were black like that, so I stamped them out black, it would be like that black, okay? And it would look a little bit more kind of um, ominous maybe or dramatic, it doesn't have to be ominous. So anyways, okay, so that's just going back to some uh, fundamentals right here. Main image, filler images, foreground, and subject, okay? Like those little tiny things like that are usually the last things I stamp within a scene. So start. It's not always this case, but it, it kind of comes into play a little bit oftentimes your main images are often the larger ones. The filler images are often smaller, but it's not always the case. I mean, I could stamp something like these trees out, but let's say I'm going to stamp a big cloud right back in there like that, or, you know, a big Milky Way or something like that. Sometimes the, you know, the other types of images are larger than the subject, you know. I could go with a big Milky Way back there, or something like that, or whatnot, reflected in water and land. But that would be those would, two would be larger than kind of the focal point of the uh, the piece. So um, stamping out our main imagery in a dark color, and then our filler sky images in a color that our color scheme is going to end up being. So it just kind of gives you a little bit of a head start in terms of utilizing those colors within the images that will represent the light source and also the images that will be reflecting that same light. So if these clouds are going to be illuminated and oranges and reds, pinks and browns or whatever, why not stamp them in that color to begin with, okay? The water surface is going to be kind of reflecting this blue nighttime type of moonlit 
scene, so why not create those shadows within that area blue already, okay? So remember that shadows aren't necessarily black, okay? They could be if you're going for more drama, but, um, you know, the shadows on something like this, blue right here, okay? See that shadow right here being cast by that? It's a darker version, right, of that blue there. Okay, it's the same blue, but shadows are just darker versions, okay? So here's this orange right here. There's a darker orange right here, right? See that? So that's what ripples are across a kind of a water surface. It's like a fabric almost of that color. So the ripples are, um, the shadows within the ripples are darker versions of that. Okay, so does that make sense? So think about that. It doesn't take, you know, too much though, okay? You don't have to think about it in terms of local color, okay? Local color means sometimes people's ideas of water, water is blue, right? Okay. But not if you're shining like a bright red light on top of it or something like that. Or at nighttime, um, let's say there's no moon, that water is going to look like this satin black surface or something like that where there's no reflected light, okay? So just think about it a little bit, you know, in terms of that. It doesn't mean that you can't do a blue sky up here and green grass, okay? It wouldn't look quite as realistic, but we're not going for realism in the scenes like that. But just in general, as far as kind of a nod to a little bit of referencing of light and reflected light in nature or something like that, then you just kind of uh, go with um, the colors out of those color schemes. And you just have to think about it in terms of a little bit. And this one right here is local colors, green trees and, you know, blue. I'm trying to, I don't know, high noon clouds or something like that. You know, it would be something of that sort. You know, just kind of your cumulus, standard cumulus clouds up in the sky where they might look kind of more blue where you're you have a blue sky. Okay, so anyways, hope that comes in handy for you. We'll get into some coloring in a future video of these, I'm sure. Um, when I'm doing this right now, I'm not thinking, okay, I'm coloring them, but I don't know, after I look at them a couple days, I just can't seem to resist. So anyway, this is a good way to work too. If you're just doing a bunch of compositions like this, you can work out a bunch of them and then kind of go back and color them one at a time or, you know, in the case of like these three right here, if I had some blue inks out or something like that, I can kind of do them kind of in a, I don't know, assembly line. I don't, I hesitate to say that, but um, kind of in a, at the, you know, a process that's at the same time. Um, you know, if you're, especially if you're using reinkers like I do quite often, and I would have the reinkers already in here, you know, and I'm just doing blue and then doing blue in here and blue in here. And sometimes you can kind of achieve a really great consistency between, you know, some scenes that you finished off at the same time, you know. Um, and it's really great practice because you can get a really good feel for the uh, your application method, whatever they might be. I use a lot of the stylus tools. One of the things I'm going to experiment with is uh, soon is um, just using a cotton ball with dye-based ink and filling in. I don't know. This is I've been doing that with the um, pigment ink and it's worked great. And I I don't know. I just haven't thought about a cotton ball before. But I gotta think that this I don't know. Just in theory, at least, it's a really soft um, fabric and thus applicator. And it might work really good in terms of achieving some really soft applications. So those types of things, you know, cosmetic wedge things, um, I don't know where it went. Um, one of those um, foundation makeup brushes, you know, would be good in here. So whatever kind of um, surface you're working on, just use um, the your media accordingly. If you did it on a matte piece of paper, then... Um, you know, it affords you the ability to go in with uh, pastels or chalks or something that would require a little bit more tooth to it, you know, to stick on it. You know, when you're working a glossy cardstock, you know, you can't apply things like chalks and uh, pastels and have it stick, you know. So, um, with whatever you do, 
This could always provide you the nice foundation for whatever media you choose to use within your piece, okay? So, anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. If you like this video, I hope you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.